This was probably the most unhinged video I did. I think I've ever had. So for Christmas, I received these two books. They may be two completely different genres, but they both have one thing in common. They're both set at Ikea's. Well, fictional Ikea's, no one's getting sued here. But I thought, why not add to the ambience and do something a little bit strange and read these books that are set in Ikea's in Ikea. Now, the major problem for me and the reason why I haven't produced this earlier is the fact that I don't really live anywhere near an Ikea. The nearest one is all the way over in London, which isn't that far, but I still have to get the train there, so it feels quite far. And interestingly enough, I was looking on the map, and it's literally really near where I used to live, so that's a bit of a gag. It's also going to be fun for me to actually just go to an Ikea, because I haven't been to one for like years and years, like probably like 15 years at this point. But uh, let's go to Ikea. I'm actually quite excited. And so began the torrent of trains. I kind of hate these Tenzik trains, not gonna lie. There's no armrests, no Wi-Fi, no plug sockets. They're bad, and they take forever to get from one place to another. So while I waited for my music to run out, I don't have Spotify Premium, I took in the beautiful sights of warehouses, other trains, retail parks, and these crimes against architecture. Oh, that's me. I think the trouble here is going to be navigating the motorway. <laughs> We've got a convenient overpass, but I don't know where this leads. In the distance, I hear it's so loud. Oh my god. Wow. I haven't been here in so long. It was honestly just quite cool to be back in the place where I had lived the first chunk of my life. Up there is the South Circular, I believe. Ooh, we're almost there. I must say this is a lot better of a walk than I was expecting. It's not that busy, actually. That's good for me. Finally, I had made it to Ikea. After all that, is it not even blinking open? There are just people waiting outside, and I think maybe because maybe it opens at 10. I'm here way too early, why Why did I do that to myself? Why do they have loads of random kettle chips? That's really strange. I can't believe I'm here to be honest. Imagine it, right? What did you do on your day out to London? Oh yeah, I went to Ikea. 10 o'clock came around a lot faster than expected, probably because I got there at 9.55. Step one, have a look around the shop. Okay, I think there's nothing here, I think I'm gonna go upstairs. Ooh, it's the shop. There's a whole thing for sharks. All oh, right, that's the restaurant through there. So I made my way through the showroom and I spotted some familiar furniture. Hey, I've got these. This is nice. Welcome to my kitchen. That's like all those people stockpiling things on the internet. It really feels like snooping around someone's house here. I like this shop. I actually need to get a new desk. That would fit in this space, I think, because it's quite sort of small. That's where they're hiding all the soft toys. This is only a fiver? Wow, okay. This shark is actually following me around the shop. That's quite a cute room. It's a shame the window looks so fake. At that point, for me, the most socially acceptable place to go and sit down and read my book seemed to be with the soft toys. Maybe because I was thinking that if I got too nervous, I could just dive into one of the soft toy bins and uh, hide among the bears. I did see two grown adults having a fight with the jungle cock though, so that was quite funny. So our first book is Finna by Nino Cipri, and this one is about mainly two employees, and we learn that they've been in a relationship, but for whatever reason they've broken up. And one day at their job, they discover that an elderly customer has gone missing. And this opens up a whole can of worms, and they find out that the place that they work for essentially is a hotspot for wormholes that can take them into different parallel universes. I 
finished it. I quite enjoyed it. It kind of reminded me of the uh, Over the Woodward War series and Danger Mouse. Gonna get my four thoughts when I get home because obviously I'm in public. And then it was lunchtime. <laughs> Guess I meant to get myself one of these things. I got the vegetable biryani because I didn't really fancy the meatballs. Anyway, this smells amazing. So uh, let's try some. That's pleasant. It's only like a fiver as well, which in today's economy, quite good. I'm slightly surprised that this doesn't have any E numbers in it. Book two is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, which has had quite a lot of hype online. I've seen quite a bit about it. And it is about, once again, someone who works at a furniture shop. And every day the employees there have been finding like broken bits of equipment, stains on sofas, that sort of thing. And one night, our main character Amy and a few of her fellow employees stake out at the shop to try and find out what on earth is going on. These margins are ungodly. Why are they so large? I do actually need to get one of these things, so maybe I'll get one. I almost fell down the escalator, that was fun. I'm leaving though, I'm buying this and leaving. Well, okay, it's been several days. I don't actually know how I'm meant to sit in front of this thing, because it's... Should I just get a tripod? Let's get a tripod. <sighs> Sorry, I had a little bit of a drama with my SD card, and I thought I was filming, and I was not. Anyway, let's talk about these books. I was going to talk about them individually, but then I think they're pretty similar and have many common themes. So I think we'll talk about them together because they're both getting the same rating out of me and that's a 3.5. Round it up though, because I'm feeling generous. And three, three just feels too low. In my mind, it feels too low. Both of these books, interestingly, but not surprisingly, have a big focus on capitalism. This one's a little bit more like, yay capitalism, but obviously sarcastically. Whereas this one I think is a little bit more subtle in its betrayal, because there are a lot of metaphors to do with being stuck in a job, right at the bottom of the ladder, wanting to get out but not knowing what to do. And some of this relates to the horror element as well, I would say, if you're, if you're trying to uh, critically engage with this book. Which, I think there are two sides to it, because there's that side, but there's also the sort of like campy horror, oh gosh, we're stuck in an Ikea-like shop, are there any ghosts around? I think both of these actually would make great TV adaptations. Or films. This would definitely make my pulse raise. It didn't so much when I was reading it, I wasn't scared <laughs> at all, um, but I think it would work really well as a film. Like I could see it playing out in my head and I always like when a book is able to do that. This one has a big focus on parallel universes and I, I didn't always feel like that was utilised to its full potential, but at the same time this book is like 100 pages long. So what can you really do in 100 pages, you know? This one has an interesting case of I was really enjoying it while I was reading it, but when I put it down, I was not thinking about it at all. Like, I had no desire to pick it up, which is interesting. And definitely means that I can't give this anywhere close to a five. Now, finally, I've given reviews of both of these books. Let's ask the big question. Did reading them both in Ikea actually haunt my reading experience? Yes. Yeah. I truly do believe it helped me imagine what was going on better because I could see the store in my head as I was reading it. I actually had so much fun filming this video. I really do think that sometimes I should make my unhinged video concepts because this is the most fun I've had making a video since probably the Goodreads choice one that I made. Anyway. I think that's everything. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Please stick around for everything else that I have got in store this year. Um, I have some other unhinged video concepts that I am seriously considering making after this one was so successful. But otherwise, I will leave you to get on with the rest of your day. Hope you have a good one. Goodbye.
I really, really hope the same. <laughs>